All right, so we're doing a 200% boron cube, and I've got the flow set for a maximum of 80. The filament is wet. I, I just opened the roll yesterday, and it's been drying overnight since late last night. Uh, so it's going to be a little bubbly, a little frosty because of that. Um, but once it dries up, it's going to really clean up this print. Probably going to take another another day. Um, so I was only able to get 62. Oh, uh oh, uh oh. There's a problem here. Let's see if we got a problem. So this is 80 mms3, and I'm looking at the layer lines. I'm gonna give it a little bit more to see what it looks like. What I ended up doing is changing to a Moon's uh, motor for the extruder, 0.19 newton meters, and the motor I had on here was an LDO 20 millimeter wide motor, and it was 0.1 newton meters. So I wanted to give this other motor a try, but in the process of installing this motor, I pulled on the filament uh, on the, uh, the filament line here. And there was a lot of drag on it. And what I found is that the uh, I'm using a BTT filament motion sensor, and the wheels inside there have a really strong spring on them. And that was causing a lot of drag on the filament. So I've got that uh, bypassed right now, so there's no filament sensor. So what the motor did versus what the filament sensor did, I'll have to reconnect the filament sensor once I find the max flow and then see if if I get a fail on this print. Um, so this is a, a tungsten carbide point, point 0.4 nozzle. Uh, it's 320C uh, extruder temp. And there's no way I can, I might be able to go down to 315, maybe. Uh, it, I really need that temp in order to, to force this filament uh, through. The hot end's not, it's not in long enough to heat the material at that speed. Um, so you've got a the only way to get by that is to crank crank up the filament temperature, or get a longer hot end, or make a hot end that's capable to flow more than around the 60 some, you know, 60, 62, something like that. Um, so another interesting thing here is I'm using a, a volumetric flow cap in the slicer right now at 80. And I'm also using uh, auto speed based on flow uh, for infill. And the reason that I, I'm doing that is if I do not use auto speed for infill under the filament tab, uh, there's a disclaimer in there or a, a, a note that tells you what your maximum flow is for three different features. I believe it's uh, perimeters, bridge, and one other I cannot remember. And if I don't have the auto speed set in the uh, speed section, then the filament flow value, if I set it at say 70 in the slicer, it will show under the filament tab that it's into the 114 MMS3 range, which is quite odd. However, if you turn auto speed on for just infill, you know, set it to uh, whatever, whatever you want, when you go back to the filament tab, it shows the proper maximum number. And then when you look at the um, the uh, slice file and the slicer at your biometric flow, it doesn't exceed the value you set. Must it sounds like it's a bug to me, but I, I don't really know how they utilize that in the slicer. Uh, so I, I couldn't tell you. Um, but anyway, that's what I found to need. And, and, let, and I, I wasn't using auto speed before. In, in fact, uh, I was printing a print and I saw that I had a flow problem. And once I set that auto speed, that went away. So it, it was going more flow than I set uh, in the maximum flow rate section of the filament tab. So uh, I use Super Slicer, I don't want to say exclusively, but I use it more than anything else and mainly for the fan settings. Uh, there's more fan settings in Super Slicer 
uh, than in any other slicer uh, that I've played with. Uh, so I can I can use cooling by feature, um, and that's what I like to do. So, um, so again, this is a 200% boron cube, and I'm shooting for around 16 and a half minutes. Uh, the speed is set. I want to say to 850 with a flow cap of 80. The acceleration is a minimum of 50k. Uh, I'm sorry, I've got 50k external, 70k internal, and then overhang I have set at 40,000. And I'd like to increase the overhang acceleration, but it, it's hard to cool this, so uh, I. That's the only reason I slow down overhang is to uh, try to get better cooling uh, in those areas. Really should probably slow down the speed uh, for the overhang as well. But I'm trying to shoot for a low time. I, I did this oh, some months back and it was like around 22 minutes. So I've taken off almost six minutes uh, using servos. And then also by you know increasing the temp to get more flow. That's that's what's holding me back. Um, this um, this has a pressure advance of 0 0.008. I'm usually using zero PA and zero input shaping. I just printed one with zero pressure advance, and I had a little corner bulge, and I just want to see if I could push it up to 0 0.008 and see. Uh, if it makes a difference and if it can handle it so the higher you have that pressure advance the more demanding it is on the extruder and then you can you can fail just from having your pressure advance too high for your extruders performance and so running a lower pressure advance is gonna it's gonna print for sure better at the expense of a little bulge in the corner um, so a little bit about these servos, uh, so these are a stepper on line, 100 watt servos, they produce 0.32 newton meters uh, as a base torque and then their peak torque is I believe 1.12 newton meters. Um, it's not a lot of torque, so that little jingling sound you hear is from uh, the motor is going into two, three, four hundred percent torque, and so you know a stronger motor would uh, would probably reduce that noise quite a bit. Um, I I'm guessing. You know, this is my this is my first servo on a printer, uh, but that that little buzzing, jingling noise is is the uh, stepper motors. Uh, they're just. They're just having to hump it. Um, but you know, uh, VFA is greatly improved with these servos. So uh, if you have belt VFA, then you're gonna still have that. But motor VFA, which is where, in my opinion, most VA comes, most VFA comes from the motor. At least it, on this printer it does. I, I can't say that for other printers, only from my experience, uh, it shows that uh, I have very little VFA and all I've changed is the motors so everything else is the same I, I can only imagine that uh, and that's what it is it's got to be something to do with those motors and they run so smooth you can put your hand on here when it's running and and this is so smooth of course you can't really feel much now it's for the for the company but uh, under normal conditions that's it's just so smooth it is quite a bit of cost for some VFA, but you know, if you're trying to build something uh, and you don't like those VFAs, well, Servo's going to help you there. But it's getting it. That is getting it. I've also been playing around with uh, weighing my models in comparison to the uh, what it says in the slicer. And this is my uh, third cube. And I started off with a 
extrusion multiplier of 0.97 at this speed and the models are coming out heavy so after doing some math after the first one it went from 0.97 down to 0.93 and then I printed another one after that and I weighed it and it was still over but this time instead of 0.93 it wants 0.92 as a flow and typically you will uh, extrude 100 millimeters of filament and see what your distance is and set your extruder multiplier so that 100 millimeters is 100 millimeters. Now I can't say that I agree with that or that's the best practice or what have you. You could, you could still increase your flow to achieve the same result uh, as your extrusion multiplier. I've done it. I don't see any difference. And, and maybe because it's such a small amount, maybe that's why it doesn't show. Um, but typically a 100 millimeter test will give me around 0.9 uh, flow. Uh, so, I'm sorry, the 100 millimeter test, I usually have to use around 0.92 flow. If I go faster, 500 millimeters a second, I have to usually increase that to around 0.95. For some reason now, and maybe it's the temperature, uh, it seems to be flowing, and therefore I'm getting the extrusion uh, that it says that I need or want or, or what have you. Now I don't know whether the slicer is incorrect in its uh, projected value of the grams used, uh, but I'm, I'm extremely close to that, and I'm extremely close to my extrusion multiple multiplier of 0.92 it's 0.9 no it's 0.92 now <laughs> so I'm pretty much right there uh, so that's a good thing the bad part is having to heat this up to 320 C in order to get 80 MMS 3 of flow and that's what it's doing right now is, is 80 it's set to 80 at 850 millimeters a second and our acceleration is uh, 40 K overhang 50 K external and 70 K uh, internal. With this machine I really cannot go past about 70k acceleration on external which means also internal. Anything over about 70k I start to see issues going around curves. Uh, I see the filament is displaced or it doesn't come out right initially and it really may not be an acceleration problem for the machine it may be an acceleration problem in the extruder it may not just be able to pump it out fast enough due to the pressure that's pushing back on the extruder it, it might be the issue I don't know uh, I'll have to do more tests to figure that out um, but 70k seems to be about as fast as I want to be uh, before I have uh, issues which is humping it. I mean, 70K is flying. Golly. But these are some of the things I need to do in order to understand kind of someone who works off of uh, and if or not Boolean. You know, if I do this, what happens? I did this, what happens? We all do it. Um, but from this, uh, this testing, I'm able to achieve faster speeds at reasonable quality. Um, so here, see our 0 .08 pressure advance, our 320C, our 70K, here's our 50, 70. Uh, we're using 60 square corner here. And it says it's got only about 15, it's going to be about 16 minute print. And the toughest problem for me is going to come up here shortly. I've got 10% uh, infill here and then I'm going to increase the infill right here. And it's going to break up a little bit because it has nothing to rest on underneath it. And it's going to clear itself up. And then it's going to lay down the uh, the bridge layer, and that's where things are going to go bad. But we'll see. 
I use extra infill there just to try to to make that next surface be really good. So here's what we're looking at. We want to look at this layer and see how bad it is, and it's not bad. It's not too good on that left side. It's not bad. That's the filament falling through the holes. And of course, since pressure advance is non-existent, it's not going to uh, extrude at the right time at the beginning or start of a line. And so therefore, it's going to cause some, some problems. And see, this is a fail. So that, and of course, it's going to look fine, but you see underneath it's, it's uh, gritty, the filament's wet, it's starting to clean up now, but you don't want that. Yeah. Yeah, no bueno. I can't take it off the bed right now. It it uh, it's stuck too much. I gotta pull the plate and do that. But you can get an idea here how it looks. It's really pretty decent. Other than the top, the top is uh, is is uh, like sandpaper. Uh, it's no good, okay. But mostly everything else is pretty decent. Um, so it looked like this print was it's going to be about fifteen fifty five. Uh, 200% and I would imagine it's going to weigh pretty much bang on at a flow multiplier I mean at a flow ratio of 0.92 um, yeah well there it is Mr. Voron Cube one of my favorite tests actually I like this test so alright we got we're up to 80 now we're doing good can I go more no this is this is no good I'd have to slow this down just to get that to smooth out. It's just too much flow for this hot end. Uh, and obviously at 320C, well that's kind of a, it's kind of a problem. And the filament's moving so fast that it doesn't have a really a chance to get to get entirely that hot. Um, at least I think so. That's what it looks like to me. You don't see it all melted all over. It's just humming through there so much and the, the heat doesn't get to the core of that filament. And then here you end up just trying to force it through there um, and so and so yeah we increased the flow to 80 well it's an 80 max and since it's not a super large print I would have to do like a, a 250 percent benchy to see how those lines go down and see if there's an improvement and also the wet filament this is wet for sure this filament should look much different than that so uh, maybe another 24 hours uh, we can try this again Anyway, it can be done. Just do it.